The calories in, calories out cretins have been crowing about how Ozempic supposedly proves calories is all that matters. Apparently, they're too dumb to understand that GLP-1 is a satiety hormone, which is affected much differently for the junk carbs they promote than for real food like meat and dairy. The natural way to get an effect similar to Ozempic is simply to eat fatty cuts of meat. This tells your body you have enough nutrition and you can stop eating. This will not only save you 1000 to 1500 bucks a month, but also prevent some very nasty side effects from occurring. Ozempic Face has been sweeping the internet and leading to all kinds of concerns and myths about weight loss. People worry that they're going to lose the fat in their face and this will make them look like a hideous ghoul. However, that's not really what's happening with Ozempic Face. The real issue is loss of muscle tone. This can also happen to anybody as we age in any part of the body, but when you're losing weight with Ozempic, it's very common. Thankfully, we can avoid this completely. I've lost 180 pounds. I do have a little bit of excess skin, though. Bit of a problem here, yeah. In spite of what many YouTube fitness experts will say, muscle tone is something that exists and something that can be addressed. As you age, your muscles and tendons tend to loosen and sag. On older bodybuilders with lots of muscle, you can see this very clearly because the muscle droops downwards, but you can still see it's a solid mass. It's not that it's turned into fat, it's that the actual muscles are hanging down due to age. For most people, this strikes in two places, the face and the derriere. In the old style facelifts, they would just pull back the skin and it would smooth out the wrinkles, but it would end up looking very weird because they didn't really address the root cause, so it's sort of like an overstuffed sausage look is what you'd get, where the skin is all stretched out but the face is kind of bloated and weird. In newer facelifts, they actually shorten the tendons and the face muscles and reattach them further up in the muscle to shorten the length. Now, the other type is called deep plane facelift, and as the name implies, it goes much deeper. So it goes under this mass and it releases the ligaments that hold the facial tissue together. And by releasing the ligament, it can elevate the entire face. I must have heard a thousand times that muscle tone doesn't exist, but once upon a time it was worried over a great deal, especially by women. They had women-only health spas where they would exercise to maintain muscle tone, and this is a practice that actually does work. You can improve muscle tone, and any exercise you do with your muscle will help. While we know more about exercise in some ways today, we seem to have forgotten a lot somehow. Anytime you exercise a muscle, the muscle becomes tighter. Anytime you work the opposing muscle, it loosens up. If you think about it for two minutes, this makes perfect sense. Your brain must release the tension of opposing muscles, or else you'll tear them because they're working against the motion that you're doing. This is not just for the sake of efficiency, but also to prevent very serious injuries. Likewise, your muscles tighten up when they're used because the fibers have to work together and protect themselves from sudden activation. When the muscle fibers are tight and connected, they are ready to safely fire at any time. This is one reason stretching can actually be harmful to athletes, especially right before very strenuous activity. It also makes you weaker to stretch before lifting weights. Again, we see the body has the perfect self-correcting system already perfected for us. All we have to do is properly make use of it. That means working out the body's muscles evenly and doing a variety of complementary exercises. That way, we don't get our chest too tight from doing only bench press. We also do rows just as much, and that means that the chest loosens up and this actually will make your chest look bigger because it'll give you better posture. If you've ever seen old guys waving weights around at random, they aren't being stupid. 
These are probably former athletes, which is the case for virtually everyone who went to the gym back in the 70s, or even before that. These so-called boomers, some sad people love to mock today, often know more than anyone else in the gym. They know that just giving all of your muscles a small stimulus is enough to help prevent atrophy, and that it's especially good for maintaining muscle tone, which becomes vitally important as we age if we want to look anything remotely like we did when we were younger. This is something that happens with age, but it can be prevented. However, when you throw in Ozempic, it makes things much, much worse. When you lose weight with Ozempic, it comes at a very high price. First off, not everyone loses weight with Ozempic, so the calories in, calories out guys have it wrong once again on that front. For those who do lose weight, about half the body weight they lose is muscle. That is a terrible ratio, even compared to prolonged dieting. And worse yet, muscle atrophy makes your muscle tone become very poor, and this is what leads to the face and other muscles sagging when you take Ozempic. When doing alternate day fasting, for example, you actually gain lean tissue on average. That seems to hold true for all fasts of 96 hours or less. There's many reasons for that, but it largely comes down to growth hormone and insulin resistance. It also normalizes your testosterone for both men and women, and that means that you're going to have the proper building of muscle. But when you have excess skin and connective tissue while fasting, your body will also consume some of this. This not only helps avoid loose skin, but also keeps your muscles from being loose and from having poor muscle tone. The weight loss on Ozempic and similar meds not only causes muscle loss, but is slow. It also comes back as soon as you stop taking it, but the muscle and lean tissue are gone for good. That means you'll have to spend thousands of dollars to get any weight loss results and keep paying $10,000 to $20,000 a year for the rest of your life to keep it off. So instead of taking some crazy overpriced meds, try some fasting and eating a whole food, low carb diet. Then your hunger and satiety hormones will be properly stimulated and this will help you control your diet at the proper levels. And since you're not going to wither all your muscle away and you'll probably gain muscle, you won't have to worry about your face falling down and looking bizarre once you lose the weight. And if you want to lose a large amount of weight, do some 36 to 96 hour fasts. This is the only way to quickly lose weight without lowering your metabolism. When you fast, the hunger hormone ghrelin goes down over time and it stays down after you break the fast. When you diet for protracted periods, your ghrelin just goes up and up. Even if you do manage to lose a large amount of weight, you're almost certain to gain it all back because you still have the ghrelin levels of someone that's 100 pounds heavier and you're going to be ravenously hungry. That means you will constantly want more food than you can possibly make use of and it will be extremely hard to keep the weight off. I know that's the case because I've experienced it over and over again. For those who manage to lose 50 plus pounds through dieting, over 95% gain it all back within 6 months and then some. The problem is your body is designed to only lose weight for short periods of time and once you lose weight for a week or more, it just stops. Then you have to eat less and less food each week to keep the weight loss going. So you're being very inefficient and having to cut many times the calories that you actually had to eat to gain the fat in the first place. When you fast, you have 100% efficiency or even more. If you cut out a whole day of eating, you're going to lose two thirds of a pound or so. While if you cut 500 calories from your diet, you might lose a pound the first week, but after that you'll probably lose nothing. And a lot of people won't even lose that first pound. And in the Women's Health Initiative, they cut over a million calories and only lost a few pounds of weight, which is absolutely unbelievable and ridiculous. And yet that's the exact advice that they give us. Just reduce your calories 10%. Well, if you do, it's not going to do anything. When you fast, people tend to keep the weight off much more easily. They also don't lose any muscle or organ tissue, unlike with prolonged dieting. So the metabolism just doesn't go down. 
In fact, it goes up. Not just during the fast, but also the rest of the time. The only time it starts to go down is when you do extremely long fasts of a week or more. Fasting also increases mitochondria in the body and the rate at which they consume fat. And this is the real basis of basal metabolic rate. With both fasting and low carb diets, you burn more calories and you don't have to do anything extra to do it. While thyroid activity is presented as a measure of metabolic rate, in reality this is a highly catabolic hormone and you do not want excessively elevated levels. This will destroy lean tissue and eventually lower your basal metabolic rate. It also has many negative health consequences. So while thyroid levels are raised by carbs, it has a lot of bad effects on your health. Muscle tone is something real in spite of what many say, and is harmed by taking medications like Ozempic, which cause very serious side effects that are more than just cosmetic. Losing weight from fasting in a low-carb diet will have the opposite effect. Instead of wasting muscle and ruining tone and metabolism, they will help build muscle and increase muscle tone and metabolism. Whatever way you lose weight, weightlifting is also vital to get the best results. This will make sure that both your muscle tone and muscle mass are optimal and you don't have a saggy body later in life. When it comes to your face, you can also do exercises there, but simply chewing food is going to help a great deal to maintain your muscle mass in your face as you age. So try and stick to real foods where you have to actually work to eat it a little bit and not all kinds of processed foods that you're basically just slurping down. Fasting will always have the best results and the fewest side effects when losing weight. If weight loss is the main goal, alternate date fasting is the quickest and most effective way to lose weight without losing muscle and it's a very easy pattern to keep up as long as you just stick to it. Anything besides fasting will always be less efficient, cause more hunger, and be harder to maintain. So pay no attention to the babbling of people recommending Ozempic for those claiming it proves calories in, calories out as the only basis for weight loss. Keep your insulin low through fasting and a low carb diet and you'll always have easy control over your hunger. And short fasts will always be the most efficient and sustainable way to lose weight without reducing your metabolism. You and I are so smart. <laughs> Rick Marshall? I knew instantly you could help me. Thank you. You are a truly advanced intellect. I don't know how you manage amongst these others. I don't know how I do either. I really don't.